Hello everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about KCMO programs and city services. Municipal court officials are warning the public about an email scam that falsely claims the recipient is scheduled to appear in court. The email instructs recipients to read an attached court notice. That attachment contains a computer virus. Do not open the attachment and please delete the email. These messages are not coming from the Kansas City Municipal Court. The court will never send unsolicited emails containing court papers. If you have a question about a notice you have received, please call the court at 816-513-2700. Keep up to date with the new spring issue of KC Moore Magazine, now available online at kcmo.gov. Just enter KC Moore in the search bar. KC Moore is the city's twice a year magazine, and it features the spring curbside leaf and brush collection schedule, as well as helpful articles about important city services. The city kicked off its new Community Engagement University on April 1st. Community Engagement University is a free seven week program that connects residents with City Hall to build a better Kansas City. Topics include Local Government 101, Keeping Our City Safe, Building Our City, and more. The first session of Community Engagement University is full, but future sessions are planned. Visit kcmo.gov and search Community Engagement University for more information. The city's Rich Knoll Paysetter Award goes to Miguel Echevarria of the Water Services Department. Echevarria received the award for his work implementing the city's new and efficient fire hydrant inspection process. Each month, the Pace Center Award recognizes city employees who are skilled in communication, customer service, teamwork, and leadership. The award is named in honor of former Assistant City Manager Rich Knoll, who served the city for more than 26 years. To learn more or to nominate an employee, visit kcmo.gov and search for Pace Center. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi. I'm Janet O'Hagan with Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, here to tell you about some upcoming events taking place at your Kansas City facilities. Spring is here at a busy time with proms, dance recitals, and interesting and fun events at the Kansas City Convention Center. More than 1,600 area students will converge on Bartle Hall on April 17th for the iBuild Showcase. Kansas City's premier regional construction industry career day. Formerly known as Crayons to Cat, this event showcases heavy equipment and other technology which allows middle school and high school teams to explore career tracks in construction including engineering, architecture, contracting, and the skilled trades. The annual iBuild Showcase is sponsored by the National Institute for Construction Excellence. For more information, go to NiceKC.com. On Sunday, May 4th, check out the world's largest costume dog event at the annual Chihuahua Parade at Barney Ellis Plaza. All kinds of dressed up dogs are welcome at this new time procession that hopes to break the Guinness Book of World Records for most dogs in costume. A $5 entry fee per dog goes to no-kill shelters in the Kansas City area. Each costume dog in the parade will receive a $12 dog toy. For more information, visit kcdogparade.com. Come to the Spectrum Fantastic Art Live 3 from May 9th through 11th in the Grand Ballroom at the Convention Center. This three-day event promotes the fantasy genre within the visual arts and provides an annual showcase for contemporary artists. Fans of science fiction and fantasy can view original artwork, listen to panel discussions, and shop at a three-day celebration. From Friday night's opening party through Sunday afternoon, visitors can mingle with hundreds of talented artists at this unique event. Register and buy tickets at Spectrum. FantasticArt.com. To learn about more events taking place at Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities, visit KCConvention.com and click on the events calendar or call 816-513-5000. 
Hi, my name is Floyd Peoples and I'm the Fire Marshal for the Kansas City, Missouri Fire Department. Today we're going to talk about escape plans in the home. Having an emergency plan in case of a fire is just as important as having a smoke detector. Exit drills in the home, or EDITH, can help people prepare for an emergency. Most home fires occur at night when people are the least prepared. Home fires can become a disaster if you and your family are not familiar with how to escape during an emergency. To design your fire escape plan, sketch the floor plan of your home on a piece of paper. Indicate on the plan all doors, windows, and other areas from which you could escape from each room in your home. Draw arrows to indicate the normal exits, which would be your primary escape route. With an alternate color, draw arrows to indicate a secondary exit from each room in the home. Choose a location outside the home where family members should meet once they have safely escaped. A neighbor's front yard or sidewalk may be an ideal meeting place. Your fire escape plan may look great on paper, but does it really work? Regular exit drills in the home will allow you to test the plan and make adjustments as needed. When practicing your exit drills in the home, remember to use alternate escape routes as well. Children should be closely supervised during drills in the home and no one should take unnecessary chances. As a reminder, an operating smoke detector should be located in each bedroom and on every level of the home, including the basement. Everyone should know the location of telephones in the home and where to find a telephone outside of the home. It's very important that children also know the 911 phone number in order to report a fire or other emergency. So let's summarize. Take the following steps to help stay safe in case of a fire. Prepare a fire escape plan, install and maintain smoke detectors, examine your home for fire hazards, and take steps to prevent a fire before it occurs. To watch additional videos about 311 or other city services, check the FYI KC webpage at www.kcmo.gov and then search for FYI KC. I'm Floyd Peoples wishing you a safe day. Thank you. Do you have an idea to improve your neighborhood? The city's Rebuild KC Neighborhood Mini Grant Program may be able to help. Rebuild KC will award grants up to $3,500 to registered neighborhoods whose projects foster partnerships and build upon existing assets. Successful grant applicants will be required to provide a dollar-for-dollar -dollar matching contribution of volunteer labor, donated materials, and in-kind services. For more information or to apply, visit kcmo.gov and search for Rebuild. Nonprofit organizations that stage cultural, social, historic, educational, or recreational activities may apply for a grant from the city's Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund. The fund is now accepting grant applications for activities taking place in the next year. Applications must be received by May 1st. For details, visit kcmo.gov and search for NTDF or call 816-513-4505. The city's spring curbside leaf and brush collection begins the week of April 14th for residents in the city's north zone. On their regular trash day, residents may leave up to 20 bags or bundles of leaves and brush on their curb. Collection for central zone residents is the week of April 21st and south zone pickup starts April 28th. To find out when your pickup day is, check the water services website for the leaf and brush schedule. Residents may also dispose of woody debris at the city's three leaf and brush drop-off centers, which have reopened for the season. The drop-off centers are located at 1815 North Choteau Traffic Way, 10301 Raytown Road, and 11660 North Main Street. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov and search for The Weekly Report. Thanks for checking out The Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.